Okay, so we are back and we're talking about spike protein and the COVID vaccine. Uh, and before we dive into the stories, there is an important question we need to address. All right, so how do we know that the symptoms that people are experiencing are from the spike protein, right? And not something else. So a lot of things cause brain, there was brain fog before the spike protein exists, right? Right. People had heart palpitations and anxiety before the spike protein existed. But here's how we know. The spike protein is biologically active. It does bind to the ACE2 receptors and disrupts blood flow, blood vessels, impairs mitochondria, and activates inflammation. And some people, especially those with metabolic or immune vulnerabilities, uh, spike protein can persist in the body for weeks, months, even years after infection or vaccination. So can we measure it? Yes, actually we can measure. We can, researchers have detected spike protein in blood plasma and immune cells, especially in long COVID cases. So that is uh, possible, but these tests aren't widely available yet. So you can't just go to your regular lab core request and, and ask for a spike protein test. That would be nice because then we could measure quantitatively um, the removal process, but they do exist and the pattern of damage they reveal is consistent. So we do know that it's there. And to be clear, spike protein only comes from this virus, right? No other condition, no other virus naturally produces the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. It only comes from the COVID infection or the COVID vaccines that instruct your body to make the spike protein. The body doesn't naturally make spike spike protein because of all the damage it does. So, or in rare cases, fragments left behind from long COVID. So it's all about the COVID spike protein and COVID go hand in hand and the, the spike protein doesn't exist outside of COVID. Okay, so when we see patients with new symptoms following infection or vaccination, and when those symptoms reflect known spike activity like vascular damage, mitochondrial crush, or neuroinflammation, it is not a coincidence. So you're about to hear the stories that are the unmistakable fingerprint, if you will, of the spike protein. And they're not anecdotes, they're clues, right? And so we'll talk about in the next video how we clear spike protein and heal. But, um, you know, I, I do want to go over some stories so that you can understand the impact of spike protein. And you, I'm sure you've heard stories, maybe you have your own story. Um, sudden fatigue, brain fog, racing heart, uh, weird symptoms that nobody can explain. And, and you know, they're like, oh, there, there's nothing wrong with you. But you're like, there is something wrong with me. So I, I do want to share those stories with you, recognizing that biological impact of the spike protein in the body. So it's not rare. This is everywhere, right? Everybody has a story, um, whether it's about, again, about themselves or a family member that has experienced this. But the stories help us understand why it's so important to clear the spike protein once and for all. So let's take Sarah. Um, Sarah is a healthy 42-year-old mom who ran her own business. She got vaccinated early in 2021. And within a few weeks, she began experiencing really deep fatigue, word-finding difficulties, and a strange buzzing feeling in her head. Like, how do you describe that, right? All our labs come back normal because we we don't actually have a, a, a widely available test for spike protein. Um, and her doctor just said, you know, you need to reduce stress, which is probably true. We all need to reduce stress, but something had shifted and it wasn't psychological. It wasn't all of a sudden she was crazy. And here's what we know now. The spike protein binds to ACE2 receptors in the brain and blood vessels. It causes microvascular inflammation in the brain and it can activate microglial. The immune system cells of the central, uh, the microglia are immune cells of the, mic of the central nervous system. And this creates a low grade neuroinflammation where memory, focus, and energy are all impaired. Sarah didn't need an antidepressant. Um, and while I'm sure she needed to reduce her stress, she needed someone to connect the dots between the spike protein and the brain fog. Okay. Now, another case here, we have Marcus who had a mild case of COVID in 2022, a little cough, some fatigue, but after he recovered, he never really bounced back. He had no motivation, brain fog, loss of sexual desire and trouble sleeping. He had normal testosterone levels, but he still felt like his symptoms, his system had shut down. Why? Because the spike protein can impair mitochondrial energy production, dopamine transmission, 
and interfere with hormone signaling at the receptor level. So even when the hormone levels look fine, the tissues aren't responding. And this is what we call post-signaling breakdown, where the receptors, membranes, and mitochondria have all been disrupted. Okay, Naomi, 34 years old, had a history of mild Hashimoto's, right? Which is just inflammation of the thyroid. So it was stable for years, no problems. You know, she had been managing it, but then after her COVID infection, her symptoms just exploded with joint pain, mood swings, panic attacks. Her antibodies spiked, her inflammation markers jumped. What is the link here? What is the connecting factors? The spike protein itself can mimic self tissues and trigger autoimmune cross reactivity because we know it binds to the ACE2 um, receptors on immune cells. It can create chaotic signaling and immune misfiring. So in Naomi's case, the spike may have been the last straw, right? The straw that broke the camel's back, tipping her immune system into chronic overdrive. And unless that trigger is removed, the flare cycle just continues on and on and on, right? So you can do all these things. You can take supplements, you can replace your hormones, you can reduce your stress and still feel like crap. Um, and that's because the spike protein just continues to do what it's doing. Now, Julian was a former athlete, right? And after his booster, he started no noticing dizziness, racing heart when he stood up, cold hands and feet, which we normally associate with thyroid disorder, and a constant sense of pressure in his chest. Doctors called it anxiety. They said, you're having panic attacks, you know, take it easy. But this was autonomic nervous system dysfunction, often known as POTS. Okay, so what is the connection to spike protein? Well, spike protein affects endothelial nitric oxide signaling, vagus nerve function, and mitochondria inside neurons. Together, this leads to a dysregulated nervous system where your heart rate, blood pressure, and energy basically go haywire. Julian didn't need reassurance. He needed someone to ask, could this be driven by the unresolved spike protein in your system? Myself, I had the... Um, I never had COVID, but I had um, the first vaccine, which I didn't have any problems with. And then I got the second dose of the vaccine and I had heart palpitations and panic attacks. I just, I've never had panic attacks in all my life, um, but just had really severe panic attacks um, and just breathing difficulty. And that uh, at the time I had linked it to the vaccine, even though everybody told me it was crazy. But now that I know about the spike protein, it makes sense. And when they did studies, and even when they did the initial groundwork with looking at the vaccine, the first dose, most people handled perfectly fine, you know, in the studies that they did, the safety studies that they did. So they developed the vaccine within 42 days, did these clinical trials with like, I don't know, like it was like 30 people in the first group. They did the first vaccine and most people did okay um, with it. They, they definitely had side effects, but the group that got the second vaccine, the side effects were like off the charts, crazy, right? They had all kinds of issues with it and they still said it was safe and there were no problems, which is crazy because, you know, anything else is, would have been flagged, but Anyway, they went through with it, but it was that second vaccine that really caused a whole lot of issues. So if you've had COVID and then got the vaccine or you got the vaccine and then you got COVID or you had COVID, the vaccine and the booster and another booster and another booster, that um, additional boosters are actually making the problem worse. Um, so it's something to, to consider. But in each of these cases, we see the same pattern. You see a triggering event, whether it's the infection or the vaccine, because they both cause spike protein. Um, the vaccine purposely causes spike protein, but the infection um, causes it. And this is what creates the issues with the binding to the ACE2 receptor that then causes all the issues. And then a strange cluster of symptoms that don't match standard test. There is no standard test to, to tell me that I'm having a panic attack. I just had the ER doctor telling me I was having a panic attack. And then underlying damage to your mitochondria, your nervous system, your hormones, and immunity. So all these things lead back to the one thing, which is the spike protein. 
The spike protein is still active in the body, disrupting the deepest layers of cellular health. So the question becomes, what can we do about it? Can we remove it? Can we repair the body? And that's exactly what we're going to cover in the next video. So in the final video of the series, we'll talk about how to remove spike protein and recover your health. So don't miss it. Subscribe and share this video so that you get alerted when that video does come out and join me for what might be the most important part of your recovery.